and welcome back folks. The BF-109 is a really enjoyable aircraft. It's easily the best rank 1 boom and zoom plane. Climbing to high altitude at the start of the round and dropping on busy or unsuspecting targets is what makes this plane really stand out. It accumulates a lot of speed while nose diving and we need to make sure to always keep converting it back to altitude to ensure that we preserve as much of the energy as possible. The accumulated speed from the nose dive is a great getaway tool and all the slower planes can do at this point is just to shoot at us and waste ammo or try to climb and become a really easy target. Once we see that the plane has given up or gotten distracted, we swoop in again for the next attack. While playing with the BF-109, avoid prolonged turn fights, as this is a hard counter for the plane. Sky Sage AI, what can you tell us about the Gladiator? The Gladiator Mark II behaves very well in the sky. It's got a decent acceleration when compared to single set of wings fighters, but for a biplane it has excellent acceleration. It manoeuvres well, however it bleeds a lot of speed in sharp turns, and while its turn radius is good enough to shake off reserve planes, the loss of speed can make the plane a slower and henceforth a more vulnerable target to any other enemy planes in the area. This is a relatively fragile aircraft. It doesn't have any particular armour on the plane itself, making the pilot exposed to being hit by bullets, which can be fatal. I should have sprayed my shots at a bigger vertical line instead of shooting at a single point. Please let me know in the comments below if having the smoke on has any disadvantages in a fight. I keep having it on as it made the enemies more likely to be focused on me and picked up by team members. Once I see that the P-36 is distracted, I turn back to not give it a chance to fight my teammate. In the meanwhile, can you please recap the P-36A, which we covered in a previous episode? The P-36A is an excellent turning aircraft, which can be utilized as both a turn fighter and a boom and zoom fighter, due to its good energy retention. It can be difficult to follow if attempting to shoot it down. However, if hit, it's a relatively fragile aircraft. This first round was slower so I can show off the speed and get away of the plane. The upcoming rounds are much more interesting, so please make sure to watch till the end. Jumping into the second round, I noticed these two players fighting each other and I wanted to get some shots in on that P-36 in case their teammate shoots them down first. I've noticed that on my initial nosedive I often miss my shot, though this is probably a skill issue rather than an issue with the plane. I make sure to keep looking back to see if any of them decide to follow me, but it looks like they are really determined on fighting each other. By the way, I tried looking up the profile of the player named Is That Gamer Zone, but I couldn't find anything. They either changed their name after this fight or deleted their account, which is probably due to what you're witnessing in this round. Sky Sage, what can you tell us about the V156B1? The V156B1 is easily one of the more powerful aircraft in the lower battle ratings. It can gladly function as both a fighter and an attacker and once dumping bombs is capable of boom and zooming enemies in the vicinity. 
Even though it's armed with a defensive turret, its frontal armament is much more powerful. One should be careful with overshooting when chasing the V-156-V1. I was initially going to dive at this player, but since they were shooting, I wanted to see if they will try climbing to catch up with me. Keep on coming, Sky Sage. The Blenheim can be absolutely deadly to other early planes, particularly as the biplanes it will be up against are often flown by inexperienced pilots who tend to position themselves right behind bombers at very close range while attacking. In other words, their planes will be stationary relative to the gunner and at such a close range that he simply cannot miss. Thus, a single Blenheim bomber picking off large numbers of enemy planes is a common sight. However, it is very vulnerable once the gunner is taken out. Fighting these bombers with dorsal gunners gets me damaged the most. I usually have the most difficulty fighting against them. I try approaching them from weird angles where I would be out of their gunner's range. These last two rounds are the most action-packed. I play much more aggressively and I got used to playing with the plane. Here you can really see what makes the BF-109 shine. So far, the planes with rear-facing gunners have been the most difficult to deal with in this plane. Mainly because I always met them at higher altitudes and I didn't have the speed advantage. The strategy I came up with is to dive down and shoot them from below or circle around and shoot them from the side. Although the PBY5A Catalina is slow and clunky, it offers a heavy payload that is sure to be a game-changer if used properly. It also has a very good defensive armament for its tier, which can occasionally be a savior against an enemy fighter. The plane is quite unmaneuverable, and its wings are very weak, being able to snap just by turning just a little too tight at higher speeds in a realistic battle. If everything else fails, we are out of ammo and this is the last plane on the enemy team, a kamikaze mission is always an option. Luckily, there was a teammate nearby which was able to finish off the plane. In this final round, my playstyle is the most aggressive, and it really showcases the plane's performance in consecutive dogfights. Assisting teammates really makes the BF-109 shine, as the enemies are usually distracted. The BB-1 is one of the best low battle rank ground attackers available, and is potent in every game mode. It excels as a ground attacker, and has decent performance, good maneuverability, and responsive controls. However, its lack of armor and defensive turret, with only one 7.62mm machine gun, limit its defensive capabilities. 
This aircraft is primarily effective for bombing targets, as it struggles against faster fighter planes and operates best at low altitudes where fighters are prevalent. Additionally, its relatively slow turn rate when damaged is a vulnerability to be aware of in combat situations. The J-8A is an average biplane in terms of manoeuvrability, however, it is very stiff to the controls when attempting to roll the aircraft. This is a multi-role aircraft which can pursue either air-to-air -air combat, ground attack or both. It is armed with 8mm machine guns, which can quickly shred other low-ranked planes. Like many aircraft just prior to the breakout of World War II, the J-8A was not outfitted with any armour plating. The I-15M22, on the other hand, has decent performance as a reserve fighter. While its rate of climb may not be the best and its top speed is not a record characteristic, it makes up with its ability to outmaneuver many other early aircraft in the game. Its armament provides high chances for success in the frequent dogfights in the lower battle-rated matches. Equipped with four 7.62mm MG with 3,000 rounds in total, make this plane suitable for beginner players, which are still getting the hang of the aiming. The SB-2M100, when encountered as an enemy plane, poses a threat with its speed and relatively effective defensive armament against biplanes and early monoplanes. Its fast rate of fire and decent gunner arc of fire make it a formidable opponent However, its lack of armour protection, weak airframe, exposed gunners, and the dorsal gunner's limited firing range are exploitable weaknesses to consider when engaging this aircraft in combat. If you're flying an interceptor or a heavy fighter that is heavily armed and armoured, you can just sit behind the SB-2M and confidently take out its crew and modules one by one as its 7.62mm machine gun has rather weak penetration and damage. This is the most precise way of damaging an aircraft, however the safest tactic is still and will always be deflection shooting. One accurate burst will critically damage the weak airframe of the SB-2M or snap off its wing straight away. Thanks for watching folks, if you found this video entertaining and informative, click all the buttons below to let me know I'm on the right track, and I'll see you all next time.